Hey all you Splinterheads, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here, bringing you a Splinterlands update. Yes, that's right, a Splinterlands update. It's been a minute. Um, I haven't had a whole lot of news, or I haven't seen a whole lot of news coming out of the team. I do know that they're working on a, a lot of various things. We're getting down towards the end of the year, um, and... Um, the new player experience is uh, high on their priority list. We all know that. Um, but before we get into that, first of all, I want to say, uh, hey, thanks for checking out the video. If you've been with me for a while, appreciate it. Uh, if you're new to the channel, uh, if you were just surfing around looking for collectible card games on YouTube, welcome. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. Uh, I'd appreciate a like and subscribe on the video. Um, uh, everybody that comes by and spends their time with me uh, I appreciate the value of your time. So with that said, uh, one of the big questions um, and topics of conversation lately has been free to play. Uh, the team, uh, I think a lot of people agree that if the um, to move the game forward and make it more um, um, tasty for people to try out, interesting for people to try out, there's got to be a free to play mode. Um, and going hand in hand with that is the uh, topic of the company also working on the mobile app. Okay, so obviously a lot of these changes they're going to uh, they're making uh, are devised to work hand in hand with each other to complement each other. So um, so there hasn't been a lot of news lately. Um, but if you're new to the game, uh, this is a collectible card game. It's what is called an auto battler. So unlike uh, games like Magic the Gathering, where you pick out your cards and then you have to strategize uh, as far as playing one per round. Uh, in this case, there's a lot of different strategies, but it works a little bit differently. You pick out your cards uh, due to a set of... Uh, uh, circumstances during each card round okay they, they tell you how many mana you can use they can tell you what splinters or what colors you can use they can tell you what's ruled out uh, and it basically makes every hand a little bit different or a, a lot different um, and then you click go you select your cards click go and let it auto battle uh, it's also on the high blockchain which uh, don't let that scare you away um, because as i'm about to talk about there is a free to play mode uh, and um, they are uh, going are improving it uh, and the reason why i did this video tonight is because uh, like i said i hadn't heard a whole lot of news from the team but then i saw this comment from royal eagle in the tech update section in discord today and it piqued my interest so of course uh the reporter of in me uh, had to reach out and get some uh some more information so that's why i'm bringing it to you first of all if you want to try out splinterlands if you're new to it use my referral code in uh the show notes i would appreciate it um and if if you have any questions leave them down below and if i can answer them i'll answer them uh we also have our uh uh weekly live stream on saturdays at 11 30 eastern time um and a lot of people usually show i mean we usually have 25 to 50 people there uh, from all around the world uh so it's usually a lively discussion we usually talk about splinterlands we talk about atlas earth we talk about a lot of different blockchain games whatever's uh top of mind um as far as gaming goes but you can also stop by there and a lot of people would be willing to help you out if you have any questions and you're relatively new to the game but let's go ahead and jump into what we're going to talk about tonight and i've got a list for you because it's not just a few things that are going to go uh live in november now they he had said uh next week and uh, at this recording it's the 8th of november 2024 so next week uh would be in the week of 11th through the 15th so um, as these things go, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if, if maybe one or two of these didn't make it, uh, who knows, you know, uh, if you get in with development and R and D, sometimes things make it live, um, maybe 75% of it makes it live and the rest come in afterwards, who knows, but, uh, this is a good list that we can look at as of, uh, things they're working on that are going to be into, in the game live, uh, relatively soon. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. 
here's a little slide I made off of the list. Now, what this list is, is free to play changes going live in November. Okay, don't hold them to it. You know, obviously some, uh, a few might slip, they might get into testing and uh, they might pull a couple to work on to release later, who knows. But this was the list he gave me. Um, so uh, basically what they're doing is they're improving the experience of being free to play in Splinterlands. Uh, the experience up to this point has been largely around blockchain gaming, which means, you know, buy your cryptocurrency, invest in the cards, invest in the game, and you get uh, a return, uh, et cetera. So um, basically what they're doing is one of the chief hurdles, in my view, of bringing uh, more players into the game that are more Web2 or standard gamers is uh, kind of that whole hurdle of uh, cryptocurrency and the learning curve that goes with it. So in this essence, what they're doing is they're taking that away and they are making it free to play so you can jump in and play the game free and see if you like it before you start buying cards or investing in it or something like that and there's really no need to get into the cryptocurrency part because on some of these uh, the crypto is handled behind the scenes uh, by the game but um, the player doesn't have to worry about it so let's go ahead and jump into it the first thing is buy cards the free to play uh, player can now buy cards um, they can use the marketplace with credits so they can buy various things and we'll take a look at that in a minute um, especially this is kind of aimed at people who are relatively new to the game and want a little bit of information um, this is basically opening up the free-to-play um, player uh, to do more things in the game right they're going to be not only able to use the market they're going to be able to use the in-game shop they're going to be able to combine cards uh and combining cards uh levels your cards up to make them stronger uh among other things um uh, they're going to allow uh free-to-play players to buy and open packs uh, that's the simplest, most basic thing a card collector in a card collectible card game uh, can do, right? Uh, open packs. Um, and kind of on the on the uh, uh, mechanical side of it, or um, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, the admin side of it uh, allow you to change your username because oftentimes these... Uh, one of the chief things when you can... Um, uh, created a Splinterlands uh, account... Uh, before this and we're not free to play it would create a hive uh, account for you and you'd have to create a name well um right up front as you start the game out it gives you some um some random name that's like acolyte one two three four something like this well now free to player players can change that name uh lower competent uh compet hmm. Lower the competition competent uh, this is what i get for drinking a scotch before we're doing a video um Older modern cards as ghosts. So this is basically they're trying to balance out um, how hard it is to play as a free-to-play player, give you access to different cards, and a ghost card is a card that you don't own necessarily, but you can use in the game. You're not going to earn off of it, but you can use it to play, and oftentimes a lot of players will play with these cards to see if they like them, see if they synergize with some of their experience and their um, how they play, because everybody plays a little bit differently before they go and buy them. So uh, basically this is just a, a statement saying that they're going to try to make it not as hard not so hard to play um, but still have uh, a competitive nature to the game uh, just not so hard that it's going to you know be loss 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 you know what I mean so and if any more details come out on this we can uh, talk about in a future video uh, now players can send some assets to free to play so if you come in the game and you're playing free to play then a player that is a, uh, a standard uh, blockchain player can send you something uh, uh, of course, not everything. Uh, they say some assets, so uh, we'll wait and see what can be sent, but at least you can send things back and forth. Uh, hey, one of the best things I can see in this list is they allow free-to-play players be in to join guilds because joining a guild is one of the best things you can do when you're a new player because you can get in on the next thing, which is participate in guild brawls, which will help you uh, build up your deck You know, uh, by competing in guild brawls, which is a, a weekly competition, guild versus guild. Um, and also allow free-to-play players to unlock and lock cards. This is two things where unlock cards are soul-bound cards, uh, which you would win uh, and earn off of playing the game. Uh, 
allows you to pay uh, and unlock those cards, which allows those cards to be traded with other players or rented out or uh, sold uh, for profit. And on the lock side, uh, you generally use the lock feature on cards that you don't want anything to happen to. You want those to stay in your account. You don't want them to be traded, anything like that, sold off. And um, it, it has uh, some other security aspects to it, but allows a free-to-play player to use that as well. Uh, or those two things. Uh, also, uh, now the last two are things that free-to-play players cannot do. Um, they can't buy the Wild Pass, which would allow them to play in the Wild uh, format, um, and they can only play in Modern, and um, they can't create a tournament. And that's just a very minor thing. If you're a free-to-play player and you're just brand new, you're probably not going to create tournaments anyway. Okay, with that said, uh, I'll just wrap it up here so it doesn't get too much longer. Uh, I just wanted to bring you this video because I thought this was a huge information dump uh, or a, f a huge piece of, of news uh, that I thought was worth covering. Uh, I think this is uh, big time as far as moving the game forward, making it more palatable to get in um, standard players, and also this will definitely play into uh, when um, the mobile experience come up, comes about, which they have all also stated they're working on. So, okay. So if you're a new player and you have any um, questions, leave them in the comment section or stop by my live stream at 1130 Eastern time on Saturday. Um, and if you're a current player, let me know what you think of these updates. Otherwise, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And hey, I'll see you in Splinterlands. Mm -hmm.